An entry-level Synology NAS costs $250. I've owned one for years and it works really well. In fact, I previously did a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I expanded its storage capacity. It can do automated wireless time machine backups for our MacBook Pro. It can store terabytes upon terabytes of our favorite movies, shows, music, and photos. But so can this thing. And at just $160, it costs 36% less. Does this make the Zima Blade the best budget NAS you can buy? In this video, I'm gonna show you what the Zima Blade is, how you might use it, and why it just may be your next NAS. But before you get too excited, it does have a few drawbacks that you should know about, which I'll explain. If you're new here, my name is Michael Lane, and this channel is all about how tech can make you more productive, especially through home automation, with new videos every week. The Zima Blade is a single board x86 mini PC that starts at just $69, and looks like no other with its cyberpunk design. It has a mostly transparent plastic case with a black frame on three sides. On one side, it has a mini display port capable of 4K at 60 Hz a gigabit Ethernet LAN port, USB 3.0, and USB-C powered livery 3.0. Flip it around to the other side and there are two SATA ports for using this as a NAS. And moving around there is a PCIe 2.0 X4, which you could use to add a 10 gigabit Ethernet card, a capture card, or GPU, for example. There is a black aluminum over the bottom and one side that serves as a heat sink. There's no fan inside, but there is a connector on the bottom if you wanted to add a fan later and use it with a different case. The device comes in two versions, a dual core 3760 or a quad core 7700. The model that I have is the Zima Blade 7700, which was sent to me by Icewell. It uses a quad core Apollo Lake Intel Celeron processor designed for low power applications. The exact SOC you get though may vary among the Intel N3450, J3455, or E3950 purely based on supply. One difference among them is the TDP, which is the maximum amount of heat they generate under typical workloads, ranging from 6 watts to 10 or 12 watts. Regardless of which SOC you get, it comes with 32 gigabytes of onboard storage and Casa OS pre-installed, which is a lightweight cloud operating system. So given those specs, what would you use this for? Well, there are several possibilities. It can be a media server running Plex or Jellyfin. It can be a server running a home automation platform like Home Assistant or a Proxmox server with VMs or containers. And it can be a NAS for large amounts of external storage. You can also run Windows or Linux on it. Really, this thing is for the DIY tinkerer who is interested in self-hosting and home labs. Of course, you could instead choose to get something like a Raspberry Pi or an x86 mini PC. So why would you choose this? For me, it became clearer when I saw this, a NAS kit designed just for the Zima Blade. You can get this compact two bay HDD rack tray. It accommodates two three and a half inch storage drives. And there was even a custom SATA Y cable for connecting two drives to the Zima Blade. The NAS kit also includes 16GB DDR3L memory, a mini DisplayPort cable, and a power supply. To set it up, remove the black frame from the Zima Blade by pressing down on the transparent case. Then, remove the two small Phillips head screws and pop off the transparent case. Now you can insert the memory and put the clear case and black frame back in place. Grab two NAS drives, I had two 4TB drives lying around, and slide them into the tray. With the Zima Blade on top, connect a SATA Y cable between the Zima Blade and two drives. Plug in the included power adapter to the USB-C port and it will boot up. There's no power button to press. All right, so to access the Zima Blade, you can just go ahead and type in the device's IP address into your browser. You can grab that IP address by logging into the admin settings of your router. So once that's in, you have the interface right here of the Zima Blade. You can open up the App Store, which are essentially just different Docker containers that you can install right here onto the device. We can also come out and look at storage. So here we can see the internal storage of 26.2 gigabytes available. We can also see the 
uh, network attached storage that I added here to different four terabyte drives. Go ahead and click storage manager. So here's the internal storage. And then here we have the HDDs that I added. And what we can do is hit uh, create storage and then go ahead and format and create. Okay, so that was successful. So now we can see storage one here, which is one of the HDDs that I added. I can also go ahead and create storage on the other, format and create. Okay, so now I've got the internal system storage and I have storage one and two, which are the two HDDs that I added. And if I wanted to, I could hit merge storage to kind of bring all these together into one. And if I look down here at system storage, you can see the total now is over seven terabytes of available storage space. Now I can open up files here. I'm gonna to go to the root and I'm gonna click the three dots on the root and click share. And now I can copy this path and I can open up Finder on the computer. I'm on a Mac. And within Finder, I am gonna to go to Go, Connect to Server, and I'm gonna type in that path that I just copied. Hit Connect. Connect again. I'll just log in as a guest for now. Okay, so now I'm connected to the Zima Blade server from my Mac. I can see the different folders that are in here. So these are all empty right now. They just kind of came pre-configured this way, but just to kind of test this out, I'm just gonna drag some file into here. So here's a file from downloads on my Mac. I'm gonna put that here onto the Zima Blade. So now if I go to downloads folder here on the browser, I should hopefully see that file. Downloads and here it is, the screen recording. So now I can access the drive directly from my Mac using Finder. It's a sleek mini PC, but it's not perfect. There are four things that I wish were different, starting with the power supply. Since it uses USB-C, you might think you can use your own, but probably not. This uses 12 volt, which is not as widely supported as five volt. So even though it's USB-C, you'll need to use their power supply, which feels more like using a barrel connector. Second is related to powering up and down. There is no externally accessible physical power button and the LED for power is on the bottom of the board, so you can't see it. I wish I had a physical power button and an easily visible LED to confirm when it's on or off. Third, the PCIe setup could be a bit more thoughtful. Anything you plug in is just kind of hanging out there without some kind of shelf, especially when the Zuma Blade is sitting atop the NASRAC tray. Last but not least, this is using the older Apollo Lake family, released in 2016 instead of the newer Alder Lake or N100. This means it has lower performance and may be less power efficient, but that's reflected in the lower price. There is a lot to like about this. It has a starting price point of just $69 for that single board, and at $160 for the 7700 model and complete NAS kit, that's $90 cheaper than the entry-level 2-bay NAS that I was using before. I also like the flexibility that comes with low power consumption in x86 architecture. Want to run a media server, VMs, Home Assistant, Windows, or Linux, turn it into a NAS, it can do all that. And I think the design is pretty cool. I'll add that I saw others complain about this getting super hot, but that has not been my experience so far. Overall, the Zima Blade brings the convenience of a Raspberry Pi with the compatibility of x86. And with that optional NAS kit, this just may be the lowest cost way to get up and running with a NAS in your home. If you found value in this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. It makes a huge difference. You'll find links below for anything I covered. Some of them help support the channel at no additional cost to you. If you want additional value and discounts on my smart home merch, consider becoming a channel member. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.